Hi, I'm going to show you how to read Linda's patterns from Linda's Yarn Art. <clears throat> when you order a pattern from Linda Charles, you can check out her Facebook page at Linda's Yarn Art. Um, this is what you're going to get. This is similar to what you're going to receive. At the top of the page, it'll say Linda's Yarn Art, and then right here, it'll have the picture of whatever pattern you have ordered from her. In this case, this is just a tester swatch, so it is small. This is just so that you, this tester swatch can be used for any stitch. It can be single crochet, double crochet, half double crochet, corner to corner, whatever you want to try. This is a great piece to try it on because not only is it small, it also involves color changing so that you can become familiar with what's going on. So in this on this page, on page one, it'll say Linda's Yarn Art, it'll have the picture here, and then it'll have a color legend. In this color legend, it will pertain, of course, to whatever picture you're working on. In this particular piece, color A is black. It's, it shows black around it. Color B is red. It's got red around it. And color C is white because it's surrounded by white. So in, in your piece that you get, she will have color legend down here for you to use so that you'll know what colors you need. These, these patterns that you receive are copyrighted by Linda Charles at Linda Jarn Art. Uh, please do not sell or redistri redistribute any of the patterns that you get from her. You can do whatever you want to with your finished piece once you have finished it. Um, you can sell it, you can give it away, you can keep it, whatever you want to do. But the pattern itself does belong, is, well, is copyrighted by Linda Charles. So please do not share, don't share them, don't redistribute, don't sell them. Um, if you want to order a pattern from her or if someone sees your work and they would like to order a pattern, even if it's the same pattern, please let them know about Linda's Yarn Art on Facebook. There are pictures there of other people's work that you can look at. There's pictures there of pre-existing patterns that she already has made up and available for you to purchase. Um, there's also request links so that you can request those patterns or you can send her a picture through that request link of something that you want turned into a pattern and then of course that would be between you and her to decide what where to go from there. So page two of the pattern gives you some instructions. This right here tells you the colors. As you can see, there's 72 stitches of color A. If you'll recall, color A is black. So there's 72 stitches in this particular pattern of color A. 112 stitches of color B and 72 stitches of color C. In this, in, in your pattern, she also includes how many yards of each color you will need. This comes helpful whenever you go to purchase your yarn. For me, the yarn store that I use is close by, so if I don't get enough, I can go back easily. Um, unfortunately for most people, that's not the case, so you have to order your yarn, and you want to make sure that you have enough, of course, because it's no fun to run out of yarn. So on your yarn package, it will tell you how much, how many yards is in each skein that you buy. It will vary depending on the thickness of the yarn, um, the maker or brand of the yarn. So each package does tell you on that skein how many yards are included in that particular skein. So you can just use here if it says, you know, whatever it says, you can calculate the yards so you'll know how many skeins to buy of each color. Okay, on to the instructions for crochet. You make your first chain base one more chain than the total number of stitches in the row. So for this one, I have just wrote it out here just a couple rows so I can show you. The first row calls for 16 single crochets of B. So you want to make your first chain base one more than what is called for in the first row. 
this is the chain base. This is how you start out. I am left-handed, so this will look a little backwards to you. It is the same process. It is the same steps. You just do it with your right hand. So the chain base is just to get you started. In this one, I in this particular pattern, row number one calls for 16 single crochets. So I chained my 16 plus my one extra one more chain than what it calls for. It also tells you right here, chain base does not count as first row. This is not your first row. This is just to get you started so that you have a foundation to put your first row into. This is just the chain base, or most of the time people say your chain. Um, so there's 17. It called for 16. I did one extra in this. Um, So the chain base does not count as your first row. You will use that chain base to get started so that you can do your, I think I've got it upside down and backwards, so that you can do your rows in it. See this, this right here is initially where I started. Let me see if I can turn it upside down. You can see barely where I've started, where I did my chain. And then I used that chain as a foundation to build my, my rows on. So this will not count as your first row. This is just to get you started. At the end of each row, you chain one. Chain one and turn after each row. And the pattern is done in simple single crochet. This chain one does not count as a stitch. It doesn't count as anything, really. It's just a chain one. The purpose of the chain one, when you finish your row, let me show you a different piece. When you finish crocheting at the, when you get to the end of your row you want your row you want your each row to be even and to be neat down the sides and to have space you know you don't want it to all be bunched together without the chain one the the ends are going to be bunched together like this while your work is like this and you you don't want that this chain one gives you a bump up to the next row it bumps up my hook, it bumps up my yarn so that I can start on, on the next row without it being bunched because I want it to be smooth and flat. So that is the purpose of a chain one in single crochet. This, this pertains only to these patterns that Linda provides here. So you, you definitely want that chain one, but do not count it as anything except a bump up to the next row. That's it. The suggested hook size is an F or a 3.75 millimeter. That is, of course, just a suggestion like everything else in the world. Um, you can do what is comfortable for you. Um, I do also recommend using an F hook, especially for a portrait, because it is smaller. This is an F hook. You can maybe see there. And this is an I. With the, with the F hook, you're going to get tighter stitches, which means you're going to have a clearer picture, clear, detailed, sharp looking picture when you're finished. Whether you turn it into a blanket or a wall hanging or a pillow or whatever, it's going to be more detailed and clear, sharp image if you use the recommended F or 3.75 millimeter hook. I'll show you the difference. This is With the F hook, you can see here. You can see here that my stitches are tight. They're not too tight, of course, but they are tight because they're smaller. You're using a smaller hook, so the stitches are smaller, which makes them tighter, which gives you a tighter piece. With the, if you use a bigger hook like the I hook, you can see that my work is loose. Not necessarily my work is loose, but each stitch is bigger. So it makes it a little bit looser than with the F hook. I don't know if you can see that. That's the difference. You can tell a big difference there with the two, two different sizes in hooks. So that is why she recommends an F hook. On to reading the pattern. 
For right-handed people, the even rows are the clean side of the work, and for left-handed people, the odd rows are the clean side of the work. That simply means the clean side means the side where your portrait will be, where there's no ends, no beginning or ending tails here left. So one side will have no, no ties, no, no anything on one side except your portrait. Everything else will be on the back side, which is not clean. So for right-handed people, the even rows are the clean side of the work. For left-handed people, the odd rows are the clean side of work. That, that is so that your picture will unfold the way you want it to and not be a mirror image. If you don't, if you don't follow by this and you, you have a portrait and you're left-handed and you end up putting your clean side of work to the even, that just simply means that you're going to have a mirror image of your work. Instead of it looking exactly like it does in the preview that she has sent you, it will be flopped. It'll still be the same picture, it'll just be flopped to the other side. As long as there's no words in your pattern, that's okay if, if having a mirror image is okay with you. Um, it is a simple fix, so if you run into this problem, we can fix it. You know, it's, it's not a make or break kind of deal here. Um, she also says, I find it helpful to use a highlighter to mark off each finished color count within brackets. Um, that's just saying, and I did just write this down so that I could show you for video. Let's say I'm on row three. I've done my two single crochets of B, so I'm just going to take my highlighter and mark through that. That means that's finished. I can move on to my next one. So if something happens and I have to get up, you know, I have to put my work down and get up, I'm not going to remember, especially in a, a big portrait where there's many different color changes, I'm not going to remember where I'm at. And I don't want to have to look through the whole pattern, you know, and, and make it more complicated than it has to be. So you use a highlighter to mark it off. That way you know exactly where you're at. And when I finish this, I will mark it off as well. So on to my next one. Of course, that is just a suggestion as well as the as everything else. Um, some people like to use their pattern on their actual computer, and apparently there's different programs where you can highlight, edit the work and highlight it as you go. So there are different options out there. I like to have mine on paper in front of me and mark it off with a highlighter. So all of this, you know, it's, it's not hard. Um, it's not complicated. We tend to make it more complicated than it has to be. Um, let's see here where I'm at. Okay, right here, important to note, my patterns run left to right. In typical crochet patterns, your pattern will unfold from bottom to top or top to bottom, depending on where you got your pattern and, and how that designer wrote this pattern. Um, with my clean side showing here, you can see that this is not right. I'm crocheting from left to right, right to left in my lap or on my table or however you do it um, and then when I look at the picture it just doesn't seem right something doesn't seem right because in her pattern the blacks here and the whites here in mine the white is here and the black is here that's because Linda's patterns don't unfold from the bottom to the top they unfold from the left to the right so this is actually how my finished piece will be and then it's right she also provides a grid with your pattern. We do like to call it a grid instead of a graph because with Linda's patterns they're written. You do not have to follow along with a graph. You do not have to count squares. It is written out for you. This is just for you to use to go by as a reference tool and it helps you to understand how your pattern will unfold.